Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, so today uh, in this workshop we will be discussing about ethos ka, ethos, ethos ka results. So ethos as you all know right, uh, it's fairly simple, uh, fairly simple business. Ethos just sells watches, you know, they are a retailer of all this luxury and premium Swiss watches that you see, you know, they, they, they retail that in India. So uh, not only that, you know, in case, you know, with your watches, uh, when, when you buy the watches from them or, you know, you have any Swiss watches, you need to go through any maintenance, whether it is restoring the watches or repair work, that also they do. And the other segment of revenue that they have is the second-hand movement watches. Now, what is the second-hand movement watches? Like, like you know, all this, uh, when you talk about this luxury Swiss watches that are there today, right? Whether it is Tissot and Radot and, and, go, and so forth, all these brands. The, when you resell it also, you know, it has a higher value, right? So, you can go give it to Ethos, you know, and uh, they'll give you a price and you can sell it, you know. You can, again, uh, second-hand watches also, they sell. So, these are the two. This is, this is the crux of the entire business model, as you can see, right? So, last time also, you know in q4 fi 23 but at the uh, at the end of the year they told you, you know, in fi 24 is something we we are planning or you know they were aiming for a 25 to 30 percent growth in top line right? that is what the management had uh, you know uh, the management was aiming at so right now if you see you see that in this quarter right they've done fantastic like absolutely fantastic set of numbers you know like this is the kind of management where they under promise and over deliver right if you see that the revenue has been up 10 percent quarter on quarter as well as on a year on year basis if you see it has grown by 37 percent right on a year on year basis so you know they were targeting for a 25 percent and they've done a 40 percent car revenue so as a part also if you see the profits profits also has gone up you know 27 percent quarter on quarter as well as 50 percent on year on year you will see right there's a good amount of operating leverage also being played out here now one such thing i would like to point out is why you know this becomes a really good set of result uh, just in in case of numbers is when when you look at q1 right q1 fi24 that we are today at you know it it had been the most normal quarter because when ethos was there in let's say the last year you were comparing all the fi23 numbers to fi22 numbers right and fi22 we, we know we were coming out of covid we had a very very small base so everybody thought a base effect ke wajah se, you know itna result aa hai. but right now you see we are in the normal quarter like fi fi23 was a normal year so when you're comparing that q1 fi23 to q1 fi24 there is a bigger base also covid nahi hai, you know no no festival season no monsoon season the most normal quarter so the fact they're able to do this you know it, it's 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 incredibly great not just that uh, if you see when they started off right when uh, uh, last i think last time in q1 or q2 and all when they started off uh, they used to give heavy not heavy but they used to give a decent amount of discounts in their watches right so people thought what you know like you know nobody is gonna buy this luxury watches the demand is not going to be there you know people are buying it because abhi to ye discount de hai. the fact that you know there has been no discount like i told you the most normal quarter no discounts nothing and in spite bigger base in spite of that for them to be clocking like around a 37 to 40 percent ka top line and a 50 percent ka bottom line and exhibiting an operating leverage here is 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 really is you know is, is really fabulous the other thing here is you know the margins when you talk about it right the EBITDA margins show up they say it is flat it hasn't changed you know it is still around 16 percent now the reason for this EBITDA margin to be flat is if you see all these watches are Swiss watches right so of course you have to like you know go, uh, when you're buying it you're buying it in that Switzerland ka currency that is the CHF ka currency so you know that you know jo rupee or CHF ka currency ka because of that you know the margins has been a bit impacted and you know also uh, th those people also have taken a price act I, as a result this margin has been a bit impacted and you know uh, management has been clearly told you know this is kind of like a one-time impact that you'll see and it will get better and you know hopefully by fi you know by january this uh, the margin expansion that they told that they were talking about you know you can you can see it will be reflected uh, until then you know all this this is just a volatility of that chf and inr ka current issue right other than that if you see another main metric that we talk about here like any consumption business that i tell is volume and value growth but having said that you know since these people are selling luxury watches you can't expect a volume growth here. it is more of value even if you see in value growth also unka jo asp hai, average selling price that has grown by 12 percent on a year on year basis agar q1 fi23 or q1 fi24 ko compare karte ho, so it has grown by 12 percent on a year on year basis that's number one right and an average selling price is always moving up you can see like earlier it used to be around 40 60 80k and now the average selling price you know like it, it 
it has gone up to 1.6 lakh uh, 6 lakh rupees so that is the average selling price and like i told you 12 percent the other thing is when you talk is about the store expansion right because the amount of store they open at the end of the day you know can you can just uh, you know you can extrapolate you know what the growth also will be like but having said that see when you talk about luxury watches right see setting up a normal a normal up ka footwear ka uh, store jo hai right it is not the same as setting up ethos ka footwear ka footwear uh, sorry ethos ka watches ka store because see you are selling a luxury and premium wala watch right when the when the starting price of the watch is only around 30000 rupees so you can't put up a store anywhere and everywhere you want right it has to be in a premium location it has to be in some malls you know like really good malls like phoenix and all luxury malls yeah you know like a really good high high end posh kind of area right that is where you have to put up the store so as a result what happens here is you know aapka uh, you know uh, yeah so as a result what happens here is the existing store ka jo hai the ssg that is there that also becomes very important if you see this quarter also you know same store sales growth is again fab you can see that you know same store sales growth jo hai jo sssg jo hai is at 23 percent right so again improving ssg hai uh, value growth jo hai even that is also increasing aap dekh sakte ho right if you see that uh, 12 percent aa raha hai value growth se out of the 40 percent top line it also shows you that you know the other volume and the volume growth is also there it is not that you know volume growth is absolutely not there right so that is also there in terms of store expansion also if you see you know they have you know they are in line with the store expansion jo hai they told you know they'll open uh, uh, for 90 stores ka jo tha they, uh, that expansion you know they had given out of that you know uh, 90 stores jo tha and 40 stores they want to open by two in the next two years that they had given up the plan and 20 to 25 stores that they'll open this year in that also they're again again in line with the store expansion rate also no problem there you know they have opened six stores and they've entered new new cities also such as raipur and also again great the only thing is you know um jo unka second hand jo watches here right the second hand watches that are there you can see that uh thoda so little bit imp uh, impact has been there the reason for the second hand watches ka thoda impact is one is because unka jo ek store hai right uh ek um uh, second hand movement ka store hai, that that is supposed to be opening in a mall there, there is a mall ka you know litigation happening you know the mall is facing some legal issues you know because of that they're not able to open the store there like you know that is facing a delay that is number one the second the other thing is in terms of uh, these uh, you know the um, the second hand watches is you're seeing overall in you know all over the globe you're seeing that second hand watches ka jo price hai, it is coming down right so everybody are like oh the demand for the second hand watches are falling but that is not the case just because the prices are coming down doesn't mean the demand is falling so what happened was you know like i told you in covid there was this um, uh, supply demand ka issue right similarly just like you experience supply demand ka issue in every every uh, every part there was a supply demand ka issue here also like in terms of watches also so as a result the second hand watches ka jo tha because the first hand watches se nahi aare, like demand ka issue tha i mean demand ka issue ne, supply ka issue tha and second hand watches ka jo tha right that uh, that uh, that demand increased right as a result what happened jo watch 100 rupees mein bik raha tha, Go, uh, that price went up to almost 400 500 rupees so now of course right at the end of the day the price has to correct right like uh, because now we are seeing everything has become normal first hand watches be market pe easily are so the second hand watches that are there that you know the price from 500 has come down to 400 300 rupees that's it that, that, i'm just giving you a crux of it you know like just trying to explain it but uh, 500 to 400 300 but having said that your 100 ka watch tha, which used to always sell at 100 bucks it is still 300 percent up you know from the usual base it is just the price ko thoda bit correction hoga and having said that you know when somebody an analyst had asked you know like what can you see until when can you see this price ka correction that is happening having said that the management was like see it's like trying to predict the volatility of the market you can't we don't know about that but having said that you know the only thing is you're still seeing the prices are still above than the pre-covid levels having said that and we don't see it you know coming back to pre-covid levels it will still be up right uh, other than that unka jo other brand that is a remova uh, you know which they were doing it um yeah uh, uh, you know uh, they, are, they are opening a store up in the geo world plaza right the other thing is you know this acquisition of new brands like like i told you they they want to be like a house of watches right ethos so next time when you think about buying a luxury watch in india the only like the bulb should go in your head like oh ethos so ethos is trying to create that kind of brand presence ethos is trying to be that you know house of luxury watches so of course right if you want to be a house of luxury watches you need to have as many uh, how do i tell you as many uh, 
uh, brands in your portfolio right if you see even uh, right now also they've acquired around four to five brands right like Peret, Equipod and Eterna like all these Swiss brands that are there you know they've acquired that you know and uh, uh, not not acquired they've got the rights and rights to be the retailer in India and they're going to be the only retailer here other than that if you see the important uh, aspect here that has happened that right? the important like a game changer for them in, in case that has happened is they have acquired a uh, majority of this uh, so there is this brand called Silver city brand right so these people sell uh, Favre Luba which is one of the oldest one of these oldest Swiss brand watches I think it is the second oldest unit has it has been existing even before the Indian independence and world war right so it, it is that old right and it's kind of a big deal in you know in, in all the Swiss uh, when you think about luxury watches and Swiss watches this is kind of a big deal that Favre Luba is a, is a big deal here so they have the right you know they've got that house of brand also they've acquired it and you know like they're going to introduce it in India right so again this this has been you know the the importance here you know has been so much because the management kept you know like uh, exerting like you know this is like a big thing you know when, when you talk about watch and if you have Favre Luba in your brand you know it's like you know it's like having like one of the most important players in your IPL team like like that okay so that's that about you know uh, that is uh, th that's that because one thing you can see here if you go back Favre Luba actually you know when it came to India for the first time Titan had done it you know Titan wanted to uh, go through the you know uh, uh, sell Favre Luba in India go through the distribution but it didn't happen Titan was not successful in doing so um, now there could be I don't know why Titan was not successful there could be many issues because see, when you think about Titan the first thing that comes is also is the jewelry brand as you know they've always been focused a lot in jewel jewelry right even right now if you see the Titan ka watches ka, uh, brand that is that it is hardly 7% contributing so it just shows you you know they, they are very much focused on jewelry versus uh, let's say the likes of watches or eyewear right so when when the same question was asked to the manager like you know what are we going to do different because titan did it titan tried it once upon a time to get favre luba into india but you know it didn't work for them it was it was it was it was a failure so what are we going to do different but you know uh, ethos the management at ethos was like you know see i really appreciate one thing about the management here is you know they could have gone and you know like um, you know they could have bad mouthed or anything but you know i really liked you know how they you know just kept their views in front you know like see titan what they did we don't know but having said that we are a luxury end watches and we've always been known for that and uh, we believe this will be a successful thing for us because the way the management was talking right it was like you know this was like a biggest event for them that ever happened so that's the thing um so yeah that's that about Favre Lupa the other thing is like when you talk about you know how do we see this demand going forward right is this 40 percent growth sustainable that we see see the management is always guided for 25 to 30 percent growth and I think they can easily pull it off if they continue to do what they have been doing right now right so that is one thing having said that the demand for luxury watches right it is still robust I mean it is the, the results are just a testimony right because the fact that you you know uh, you haven't been giving any discounts the fact that your base is bigger right and this is the most normal quarter and you're still able to clock up a 40 percent revenue just shows that you know like that there's nothing there's no problem with demand and we've also been telling you you know like uh, seeing this you know this trend you know there's this there's this huge demand for premiumization as the disposable income is rising up in india right uh, there is this huge demand the only thing is like in terms of inventory you will always see that inventory is high for uh, ethos right and this is not a problem because see when you talk about this luxury watches right these are you know one of the reason it is luxury watches is see they're not made in machines right there is not like a uh, like a machine there and you know they're, they're just manufacturing these are all handmade watches you know where everything every single thing when it comes to a watch is you know goes after detailing goes into that right like like absolutely like everything from the from the gears the mechanics you know everything is handmade so as a result what happens right there might be a lot of demand but the supply is always a constraint here because you think about it if you were doing it in a machine you can probably manufacture hundreds of watches but while you're doing handmade thing of course there's always a constraint right and and on top of that when you're making these watches you need to be a specialist right when you talk about Radoka watch the way it is made is completely different the way Tissot car watch is made right so as a result what happens here the supply issue is always there so they have to keep the inventories like because see you don't know tomorrow a customer might come and which kind of watches he need right and at the same time if if you don't have that in your showrooms you know how will you be able to sell it and you might not even be getting it from uh, you know from those brands of the Switzerland because they might not have the stock of it right and some because see, there are so many retailers throughout the world right so whoever comes and takes it from these brands they will get first come first serve basis so that is why you know the management has always told like I rather have high inventory I'm okay with that right but 
I will not compromise on growth, right? I I will not compromise on growth because you know this is a situation. Uh, we have to keep the inventories here because, like I told you, the uh, the the problem that exists here, right? And that is no problem because see, when you see Ethos is a very it it, it is a small business, yeah. At the end of the day, you can't compare Ethos to the likes of you know these big brands that exist, right? And so don't expect the kind of you know uh, if if at the end of the day you know the balance sheet will always have certain kind of inventories. You know, inventories will go up, receivables might go up, payable. will go up right i'm not telling you know this is the ideal way or anything but having said that at the end of the day right if if it is a small company if it is investing in growth and because of that the inventory is going high because of that receivable and payables mein thoda idhar udhar ho raha hai it is okay unless until there is growth in that company you know they are able to invest in whatever money they are able to they are going to invest back it in the capex and you know fund the growth all by themselves i don't see the problem here right so that's that about uh, uh ethos right everything is good you know uh, the top line the bottom line in terms of volume value you talk about it the asp is great the store expansion that is going on is great right so absolutely no issues even in terms of demand as we as we speak today right the demand is also great you know uh um you know we see the premiumization trend kicking in uh, as we talk right so yeah that's that about it us i hope i see you again uh, you know i i get to see you again in the next video so until then take care bye bye